Today I'm going to show you how to get a captain's crest, logbook, flags, banner, and title. First things first, since captaincy is so new, stuff might change, you know, they might tweak some things. So if anything does change, I'll be leaving a pinned comment in the comments uh, with any new information. All right, first things first, um, all of these items can only be equipped on a captain's ship. So you either have to play on one of your friend's ships or buy one yourself. If you don't know how to buy one, it's super easy. All you gotta do is go from the main menu, click continue, go to adventure, and then go to my ships. Then go to purchase a ship, and then you can buy either a sloop, brigantine, or galleon. Pick which one you want. Then it will ask you to name your ship. Please think about your name very carefully. If you wanna change it later, it'll cost $5 worth of ancient coins. So, so make sure you've got a good name that you like and make sure it's spelled properly. There's no spell check here. So just double check your spelling a couple times. Then once you've picked a name, hit purchase ship. And then it'll bring you to this menu where you can see your ship. Get a few options here. You can set sail, repair it, or dismantle. Dismantle would just get rid of it. So if you didn't like the name, you could also get rid of it. Also, all of the progress on a captain's ship is tied to that ship. So if you get rid of it, you will lose all your captaincy progress on that ship anyway. So I wouldn't recommend dismantling it. Anyway, set sail. And then you'll get into the game. You'll get a brief tutorial, just having the pirate lord show you all the new mechanics, which we'll go over just really fast. You can now equip trinkets and trophies around your like captain's room and stuff, just kind of everywhere. They look pretty neat. You can also save cosmetics to your ship for a small fee of gold, which is very nice. You can also buy supplies from the shipwright along with captain's voyages, which are awesome. And you can sell to the sovereigns, which is super handy. Uh, but that's not what we're gonna be talking about today. Today, we are going to be talking about the milestone system. So if you go into your menu, then go into ship's log, milestones and then go to your ship's milestones it'll just have the name of the ship here now there's also player milestones here but for this video we're going to be ignoring that and just talking about ship milestones so we'll use the withered rose my sloop as an example so here are all of its milestones now how milestones work is first you'll see there are seven categories here each category is tied to a different type of milestone so it's kind of a way to categorize where that milestone fits so there's Gold Seeker, which is basically make gold. The Voyager, which is mainly complete voyages. The Emissary, do stuff as emissaries. The Hunter is mostly Hunter's Call stuff. The Feared, which is kind of more combat based, either PvE or PvP. The Rogue is, um, I don't really know how to categorize the Rogue. It's kind of just like partying. And the Ill-Fated, which is just kind of bad luck. So how milestones work is if we go into any of these categories. We use the Voyager category as an example because it's one of the more straightforward ones. So if we go into here, you'll see there's a big list of challenges. Now I got progress on some of them, but you may notice beside them, there's this like little diamond thing with some lines. This is its class level. So most of them are zero, which means I've never completed them, but some like Islands Visited is three. So what this means is every single time I complete that challenge, the class will go up and the challenge will start over. So I've already visited 53 islands with this loop, which means I've completed the challenge three times, which means it is a class three challenge. If I were to visit seven more islands, the milestone would reset and it would go up to class four. Every single milestone can be completed an infinite amount of times and you can get it to a stupidly high level if you want it. It's also important to note here, milestones won't ever get harder. No matter how many times you complete them, it'll always be the same amount of things you need to do. Okay, so that's how milestones work. Each of these seven categories has a bunch of them and you can kind of do whichever ones you want. Now, it is important to note with ship milestones, which is what we're talking about today, the milestones are tied directly to the ship, which means if you're playing on a different ship, these milestones won't update. They're only on the ship you're playing on. Also, all of them are crew wide. So regardless of who in the crew does the challenge, it'll still count. So for instance, like islands visited on the ship, you just need one crew member to visit an island for it to count. All right, now let's get to the actual rewards like crests and logbooks and stuff. So these work a little bit differently from like any other cosmetic we've ever seen in Sea of Thieves. So all of the items are automatically in your inventory. You already own the crests, logbooks, and all of that stuff, but you need to meet specific requirements on that ship to equip them. So you have them all, you just can't equip them unless your ship has a high enough status. So what I mean by status is if we go into the menu and back to your ship's milestones, out of these seven categories, every single one of them has their own set of rewards, their own crests, their own flags, their own ship's logs, all of it. Now to actually equip them, you will need to complete a certain amount of milestones in that category. 
Now it doesn't matter which of the milestones, you can do the same one a bunch of times, you could do all of them a few times, whatever you want, you just need a certain amount of class levels. And also you can mix and match rewards, you could get a whole bunch of class levels in all of them and unlock all the rewards if you wanted. You're not locked into one category. So let's go over the rewards. Once you get to class level five in a group, you will unlock the ship's flags. There is four flags for every single group. I'm gonna try and put them all on your screen. I currently only have the feared ones. So those are the only ones I can show you actually in game, but these are all of them for each of the groups. Now also at five, you will unlock a ship's title. The title will be just the name of that group. So the feared, the emissary, the gold seeker, just the name of that category. Now what a ship's title is, is when you hop on your ship, you'll see this big thing come up with this like fancy design and then the withered rose captained by the wither master. I mean, it'll be your ship's name and your ship's thing. But if you have a ship's title, it'll say right under the ship's name, the title. So it'll be the withered rose, the feared captained by the wither master. So this is just kind of a way to show off that you've done some stuff on this ship. Now, the next reward will be at 15 total class levels in that group, which will get you a ship's log. Now, again, there are four ship's logs for every single category. The ones in each category are pretty much a copy of each other, but with a different symbol on them. These are what they all look like. And by the way, your ship's log is just on your captain's table. It has some of your cool stats in it. And also if you sink, other people will see this and get to see your cool book cover. The next reward is all the way up at 30, and this is a ship's banner. Now what this means is when you board your ship, you see the thing with the name and the title and who's captaining it. But at the top of that is this cool design. By default, it looks like this. But if you get to 30, you can get a fancier one. So I've only seen a couple so far, but here's the Emissary one. And the Voyager one I know I've seen, but I'm not confident I know when. So I'll see if I can find that. But it looks like this. They're pretty fancy, and it's a pretty good way to show off that you've been doing some captain stuff. And finally, at 40, the thing you probably all wanted, the ship's crests. Now, again... Four for every group, they're mimics of each other, but with a different insignia on the top. And then finally, if you get to 50 class levels in one category, you will unlock the legendary title. This is basically just a ship's title, but with legendary on it. So if you get to 50 in the feared, you'll get the title of the legendary feared. Now also, once you reach 50 in one category, your ship will now be classified as a legendary ship. So far, all this means is that you can buy another ship of that type. So I don't think I said this earlier, but by default, you can only have one of each ship type. So you can own one sloop, one brigantine, one galleon. If you say got your sloop to legendary status, you could then buy a second sloop. Then if you got that sloop to legendary status, you could buy a third sloop and so on. So really that's kind of like the ultimate goal is to get your ship to legendary status. And again, if you wanted to, you could get it to legendary status in every single criteria if you really wanted, though that is kind of a lot of work. <laughs> All right, now that's kind of just how milestones work, how this whole system works. We're gonna go over some just tips to help you with each of the categories. If you wanna focus on Gold Seeker, the best way is probably to do Athena's Fortune Voyages. This is because treasures sold to Athena's Fortune is the easiest one to knock out. So Ryan Veil vale Voyages is probably the best for this one. If you're doing Voyager, just do a bunch of voyages. Also, side note, the voyage quest completed doesn't mean complete an entire quest, it just means complete one like map. So if you did a gold horrors voyage that had three riddles, if you completed all three riddles, that would give you three voyage quests completed. So a voyage with lots of small islands would be best for this. Also visit shipwrecks if you see them. For the emissary, just pick an emissary and do it a bunch. Um, this one is shockingly easy to do. For the hunter, uh, fish and cook your fish. Yeah, that's, that's it. For the feared, by far the best way to do this is to do Fort of the Damned, as by completing it, you will get a Fort of the Damned cleared, a Skeleton Vault opened, a Skeleton Lord defeated, and Skeletons Vanquished. Also, if you see a Skeleton Ship Kraken or Megalodon, pick it out, because it'll also give you progress. If you're going for the Rogue, um, sleep or sit on your boat or play a shanty, that's, um, there isn't really a great way to farm this one. It kind of just takes a really long time. For the ill-fated, just kind of play the game. Uh, the best way to really farm this if you really wanted to is probably to sit in a storm repair all the damage and bail a lot uh that's yeah that's about it so that should help you with all the categories now i do want to point out quickly this is not going to be my only milestones guide this was just for ship milestones if you want to know how to get any of the captain's quarter stuff like the captain's table chair carpet stuff like that or any of the trophies so like fancy pictures or fancy little trophies that you can hang around your ship 
uh, I'll be making separate videos, one for each of the seven categories. Uh, when the end cards come up, there will be a playlist with all of my milestone guides. I'll be trying to upload all of them over like the next week or two, so it might take a bit, but I will do all of them. Anyway, that is pretty much everything. If you have any questions, you can in the comments. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. If this video was helpful, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like, that'd be greatly appreciated. I make see if these guides like this every week, so that sounds like something that'd be interesting to you. If you would consider subscribing, that would mean a lot. And I will see you guys as soon as I make the food guide. Bye.